So, what we have done till now is you start with a formula, then uh, rectify it after rectification, pull the quantifiers to the beginning, okay. then use columnization, right? then after columnization all the existential quantifiers are removed, then all that you have only possibly some universal quantifiers in the beginning that is called the prefix of the formula, the block of quantifiers. Then you have the matrix of the formula which is having no quantifiers, then convert the matrix to one CNF, right. So, you reach at SCNF, Skolem uh, conjunctive normal form, fine. Then we wanted to discuss something more on the SCNFs. So, now let us take one example, start with that. I have a simple formula P A B. Okay. So, this is in SCNF, it looks very trivial, but let us see, this will tell us what to do. So, this is in SCNF, fine, there is no quantifier at all. Now, question is the SCNF is a form which preserves only satisfiability of the formula. If x was originally satisfiable, then its SCNF is also satisfiable and conversely. Fine. Suppose this is the formula and this is also its SCNF. So, now to say that it is satisfiable, what are we going to do? So, obviously, it demands of a model. If there is a model, it is a sentence also. So, all these SCNFs are sentences. So, we need not consider the valuations at all, right. We can think of only interpretations where there is a domain and there is one map which assigns the predicates and function symbols to predicates and functions on the domain. Fine. So, now this formula to say that it is satisfiable, what we will do? We can think of any domain where these two constants A and B will be interpreted as elements of the domain and P will be interpreted as a binary relation, right. Suppose you take natural numbers. So, you say A is A means it is 2, B is 3 and P means less than. So, now you have got a model, right. But so many other models can be there. In fact, there are so many possibilities, we do not know which one to choose. There are infinitely many possibilities. Any set you can choose and then try to define any relation and assign these constants to any elements in that domain, right. So, choice is too much, we do not know how to make it mechanical, but there is a natural way to go for this mechanical model construction. So, what we do? We have this A and B, let me take only two element set say A prime B prime. So, where implicitly I am taking that A is assigned to A prime, B is assigned to B prime in my domain D. Okay. Then how to reach this P? I have only occurrence of P A B. So, I write my P prime as the set containing only ordered pair A prime B prime. That is all, it is a model of this. Right. So, now comes the thing that why to take this a prime b prime, why not just a b, they are also symbols, because in this set it is not a concrete set like 1, 2 and so on having no definite properties. So, I can just as well take a b, forget in this prime and then my p will be a b ordered pair. Now, why to assign even a b ordered pair, I just declare p a b is true. <laughs> okay. So, I just get a model. So, that means given P A B, I just think of A as a an element of the domain, B as an element of the domain, where P A B is true, right. But this always we may not be able to do, because we cannot just say the whatever formula is there, it is true. Its structure is so that it need not be true, like for example, P A B and not P A B. So, whatever A B I choose, I can never make it true, right. But I can always declare the atomic formula is to be true or false, not necessarily with connectives. That much can be done, right. Okay, let us take one more example before proceeding. Say I have P x a. So, now how to consider a model? Well, this means for each x P x a. Once it is in SCNF, we have taken away all the quantifiers they are all universally quantified now, all the free variables. 
So, this will say for each x p x a. Now, if you want to have a model or a domain where it is an infinite set, then you have to give p every element then a whatever is assigned all those should be true, but who asks you to take infinite you can take also finite I can start with a itself right. So, only one element in my domain a and then I declare that a a is having only n p that will make it a model right this will be really p prime this is a prime and so on you are now forgetting those primes fine. So, easily you can make. Now, suppose it is p a f of s. Now, how far we can go without constructing one domain right. Well, you can think of one element a where f of a is also equal to a right. Then you can have p as the single pair a a that is fine that is allowed right, but suppose I have p a f a and a is not equal to f of s right, then I cannot take this f of a equal to a because equality predicate has to be interpreted as equality in strings or equality in the domain whatever is the domain. Now, when we do not have any definite domain, we are just taking the symbols A or only equality there is equality as strings, they are just formal symbols, right. So, now I cannot take F A equal to A as strings they are different. So, I cannot say A is equal to F A, then what to do? Take another B, okay. Now, you define F of A equal to B that is fine no problem. So, just define f of a equal to b that gives a model. Huh? So, p has to be changed and this will be b and then a is not equal to b in this domain fine. So, that gives a model is that clear, but always that also may not succeed huh? because suppose I have p x f of x. Now, suppose you start with A in your domain. Now, it needs another which is f of this say along with this I have not of uh, x equal to f of x right. So, we will have in P at least A and B. So, I give B and then we have to define f of A equal to B. Right, but this should be true for yeah. every x in the domain, right. So, what should be there again for b? I have to define something. So, I say define f of b equal to c. So, I give b c now it becomes infinite, right. f of b equal to a you can put yes, why not. negation of x equal to f x. So, a is not equal to f of a then b is not equal to f of b that is clear right, but f of f of a can be equal to a that does not put any restriction. So, still it can be done right, but there is a problem we are now varying this b they are no more looking like strings as per our convention here for a we are just writing as a now for f of a we should write f of a not b right. So, if you proceed that way what do you get you will be getting one infinite set because equality will be by equality of strings only in that sense no more equality you will be defining right. So, if that is our proposal then it will end up in an infinite set it will not stop yes. See, here when we take that we will not write these primes, but consider them as elements. So, that means A is considered as A itself, B is considered as B itself. Now, when you come to A f A, we will be taking A as A itself, 
but we are not going to define f of a equal to b anymore we are taking f of a itself right so instead of f of a written as b we will be taking f of a itself once you do that you cannot write f of f of a will be equal to a again they will be different as strings right so that will end up in one infinite sets right but then what is the advantage in doing this it may be possible always i will be able to do this right but again suppose i have the formula and x is not equal to f of f of x then this will again take another element so in general you may not be able to get always this finite model and there are in fact formulas for which there exist no finite models only on infinite sets they will be true right so in those cases this kind of model building will fail fine we have to go back to our earlier scheme that instead of taking it as b let's write it as f of a okay so in that case for example this even p a f a we would build a domain as a f of a and we can stop there right and then declare that p will be equal to a and f a ordered pair only nothing else they are related by p that's all right in case of p x or even p a f of a and a is not equal to f of a okay in this case what should we do i cannot take a f a but a f a will do a is not equal to f of a still so again the same domain works fine if it is p x f of x and x is not equal to f of x then there might be problem right i may start with a so a doesn't occur in the formula right so let me give some other name instead of a call it eta i just start with some symbol eta then i need f of eta right but to make this true i need f of eta as x and this becomes f of f of eta right so i need another element f of f of eta again by taking f of f of eta here i need f of f of f of eta right so i put that again and now it continues it becomes an infinite set fine we can take the infinite set A comma, but if we say that f of a is not equal to a, but shouldn't we define f for? Is it necessary? You are not even defining it. As is strings, they are not equal. Yeah, strings they are not equal, but right. uh, okay. So okay, but it raises another question. We say suppose instead of not equal, we have equal to. What will you do? Do you see the problem? Huh? not equal to is already satisfied because as strings they are not equal fine but now when you have equality relation say p x f of x and x is equal to f of x okay i can have the same domain again eta f of eta f of f of eta and so on now how to tackle this x is equal to f of x so for p i can define as it is p of uh, all x f x so that x belongs to this right that will be my set now for equality i cannot write x equal to f of x because the strings they are not really equal so equality relation has to be tackled separately it is not just writing p something right all these p's can be interpreted later we can give them 0 or 1 for each of the elements in this domain formal domain i can declare p of eta f of eta is 1 p of f of eta f of f of eta is 1 declare them all the others you take them 0 fine but then what about the equality we have to do something here equality cannot be just the equality of strings that's what it says so uh, here we are doing it 
sort of syntactically in there we have I mean we have to find a semantic ha you have to do something there it's not exactly the string equality so you have to give another definition of equality there right it is not just the string equality there some other equality will do but what equality will be appropriate in this syntactic domain right it is a syntactic domain now right you are just formally making the domain without giving any structure without bringing any set no numbers no patterns are there only accept generated from the terms generated from the function symbols okay so we have to find out what properties of equality we are interested in that will give us a definition of semantic uh, equivalent of equality in this formal domain right so since it is equality relation which was preserved for equality in the domain semantically we need some properties of equality relation on the domain semantic equality right which we are writing as equal to this is really semantic so some properties of this we need which we are interested in right so first thing is whatever is that relation let us call that e suppose this is related to as interpreted as relation e it's a binary predicate so e also will be a binary predicate okay it is a binary predicate now this e will have some properties of equality not all if all then it will be that string equality which is not possible okay so which properties we are interested in first thing is we may take that as it is an equivalence relation because equality is an equivalence relation it is reflexive symmetric and transitive that must should be there right so other thing we need is substitutivity right suppose in a term you substitute one equal to another so s is there occurring t is also occurring and s is equal to t that's what you have to uh, find uh, you will find in the formula that s equal to t occurs right then you should be able to substitute s for t and its valuation later should be same is it clear what i am telling suppose f is a function unary function where s is occurring and you have a formula s equal to t okay then f of s is assigned by phi to some element say d then also with the same phi you should get f of t equal to d that property we need right now this equality we are not having any more there is no domain here right so all that we can say that these two elements should be related by this e right if s and t are related by this e then these two also should be related by e that is the substitutive property in terms okay let's write it down so for the equality relation equality relation we are now writing this e so e is a binary relation satisfying some properties so these are the properties it will satisfy first is e is an equivalence relation okay so now the question is what is the domain of this e we have not specified it formally but we have explained enough so that will start from this syntactic domain where you start from all the constants in the formula if no constant is there then write some eta then if there are functions you generate all terms from this using the functions right that is your domain so let's write it formally if you are not getting it let x be a formula in school m form or let's say scnf okay <coughs> so now we are going to define a domain d 
let us give it a name, it is called a Hurbrand domain. Hurbrand domain of X is defined by we should give some name right say it is dx so dx contains all constants occurring in x that's the first rule we should have we should start from the constants they will be interpreted as themselves okay second if f is a function symbol of arity n occurring in a in the formula x and say t 1 to t n are terms in d x then f of t 1 to t n belongs to d x. So, it should be closed under taking function symbols right forming the terms. Then third thing is it can be anything satisfying these two we do not want that we want it to be minimal nothing else is there right it contains only this kind of terms. So, d x is minimal. satisfying 1 and 2. So, this is our domain we are considering. Okay. So, now one question is if d x does not any constant that is possible right in that case we start from eta. So, that we have to specify there okay. if no constants occur if none in x then d x contains eta some symbol we are using let us call it eta. So, that means, you will be starting the domain from the constants. So, what you do is take d 0 equal to the set of constants occurring in x. d 1 equal to d 0 if d 0 is non empty otherwise it is eta okay. when d 0 is empty we just start with eta. Then d i plus 1 equal to you may say d i union f of t 1 to t n such that t 1 to t n belongs to d i and f occurs in x. Okay. Then your d x will be equal to union of all these d i's. You do not need to take d 0 anyway you can just write i belongs to z plus. there is no harm in taking d 0 also right it is contained in d 1. So, that is how you will be proceeding to get your domain fine. In that domain only we are considering this equivalence relation. So, our interpretation or model what we are going to construct will be on this domain d sometimes we just write d instead of d sub x if x is clear from the context. So, now this E is a relation binary relation uh, on D or let us write D x once a formula x is there it will be D x on the Hurbrand domain D similarly that is also written as h sub, sub D instead of D x. 
Okay. So, it is an equivalence relation. Second is that should be substitutivity property for the terms. So, we will write that if S comma T belongs to E then so that means S is equal to T that is our sense of interpretation here right. So, if S and T are related by this equivalence relation S T belongs to E then now we need also terms. Okay, we may write for each term, there is no problem. Then for each T 1, 2, say T i minus 1, T i plus 1 to T n and n r e function f, we may say occurring in x, because they are the terms only in d f of t 1 to t i minus 1 s t i plus 1 to t n should be equal to f of t 1 to t i minus 1 t t i plus 1 to t n. So, that means this ordered pair must be in E right. So, that gives the substitutivity property in terms. Once S is equal to T, you can substitute and say that this term is equal to this term. In fact, that equal to will be in the domain, in the interpretation sense. Whatever element this is assigned to, will be assigned to this also. Now, we have the domain itself. So, we just write this is belong to E. Okay. One more we need, which is for the predicates. We cannot write predicate, order pair of the predicates belong to E. right? either a predicate will become true or it is false right by the interpretation. So, what we do we write similar thing, but now with truth or falsity if S T belong to E then for each T 1 to T i minus 1 T i plus 1 to T n which are terms. So, these are in D, in D and P and N R E predicate occurring in X. What we have is P of this T 1 to T i minus 1 S, T i plus 1 to T n is true if and only if P of T 1 to T i minus 1 T T i plus 1 to T n is true. Even you can write if then that is enough because it is an equivalence relation right. So, S for T or T for S it does not matter. Okay. So, this must hold, these are the only properties of E we have. We do not need equality, but at least one binary predicate which will behave this way. That will be our analogy for equal to. So, now what one Hermann interpretation will do? We want to interpret, right. We have a domain. Now, all the predicates are just written like relations, they are remaining with the same symbol, but we are now thinking them as if they are relations not predicates. All functions give rise to terms, in fact they are closed terms only, after they are evaluated they will give rise to terms. So, they remain as functions themselves, the same symbols are used fine. Then what else we need for the interpretation? We should tell when some atomic formulas are true when they are false, that much only we need right. So, the phi the second component phi need not be specified for anything else, only it can say when a uh, one atomic proposition is true, when it is false. Once it says this much, all the other things taken care by the connectives, right. 
So, that means one urban interpretation will be an ordered pair where d is this the domain and there is one component phi that phi we need not specify for how the predicates are interpreted how the functions are interpreted we only need to specify how it assigns 0 or 1 to the atomic formulas right. So, the atomic formulas here will be of the form p of t 1 to t n where t 1 to t n are closed terms there is no variable in that right. So, in this sense these atomic terms are called ground terms and this atomic formulas what we are getting are called ground atomic formulas along with their negations they are called ground literals. So, everywhere one ground is added as an adjective there ok. So, now what do we do is just define the Hurwan interpretation Hurwan interpretation is an ordered pair which is d phi. So, in fact, we are not defining Hurwan interpretation in general we are defining Hurwan interpretation for a formula x right. So, this d is really d x once x is in the context this d will be d x then this phi where phi of any p of any t 1 to t n is either 0 or 1 it fixes in some way right. So, phi fixes this to 0 or 1 something it fixes once it is fixed your urban interpretation is fixed and we will see an example how this goes. Let us see some simple example we should start with say not p x f of x and say p y a let us start with this that is our x. Now, our Hurbrand domain which is d x we will write as a only, but there is a function symbol f it starts from a right. So, now your d 0 is having a then d 1 will have f of a along with a d 2 will have a f of a f of f of a right. So, it continues once a function symbol is there it will be infinite. So, we take a f of a and so on that is our urban domain ok. So, what is urban map phi? So, we will call this as urban map which is fixing in the urban interpretation. So, that urban map phi let us fix it this way see we cannot do it as it is because you have to go for the ground instances right. When you put these ground terms there what formulas you are getting here it is easy to see it will tell p a f of a p f of a f of a f of a and so on. In general p f n minus 1 a f n a it looks like that. So, to all those things we have to specify how this phi behaves. Right. And also you have to say p any y from this a how that also behaves right. Suppose you want to make a Hurwan model which will satisfy all these formulas then both this must be true at the same time. So, this must be true at least this will be false right p x f x will be false p y a should be true. Now, if p of y a is true we have to write p s a equal to 1 where s varies from anything right. So, let us define that way. say p s a equal to 1 for each s in d x all other things we can take to be 0 does not matter and one among them will be this of these forms. So, let us write phi of p s t equal to 0 for s in d x and t not equal to a of course, t belongs to d x
Okay. So, suppose you define like this. Now, is it a model? You have constructed for that purpose only. Hmm? Okay. We have to see whether it is a model or not. Now, when you come to this formula, it is for each x, for each y, the whole thing. That is the really formula. Right? Because x and y are free variables, they are omitted from the SCNF, so they are really universally quantified. Fine. So, now SCNF we have taken because it can distribute over the and. Fine. So, this will be really equivalent to for each x, not for sorry, not p x f x and for each y p y a. This is the formula at hand. Now, we claim that this d phi is a model of this, that is our claim, we want to verify. right? So, now we will be going for first formula let us say, for each x not p x f x, whether that is true or false. Okay? So, this is same thing as telling not there is x p x f x. Okay. So, this will be true when you find one element from your domain such that p x f x is false. Right? For example, take a so now we see that p a f of a is evaluated to 0 is false. Since phi of p a f a in our definition equal to 0. That is our definition, whatever t is, if it is not equal to a, it will be 0. So, it is 0. So, once this is 0, it says there exists one x which is equal to a in our domain such that p a f a is false. So, not of that will be true, right. So, first formula is true. Second one for each y p y a. So, that means we should have p a a p f of a a. P f of f of a a all these should be true okay and that is true because p s a equal to 1 for each s in d x right so we have got a Hurban model okay so therefore d x and phi is a one model of x. Fine. So, this is the reason Herbrand is called the first computer scientist. He made it mechanical almost, even for the first order logic. How mechanically we should proceed? to show that some first order formula is satisfiable. Okay? We do not have to consider any domain now, just proceed formally. Okay, this also gives rise to another thing, let us see in that example what is happening. See, I have these terms in d x a, f of a, f of f of a and so on, all these ground terms. Now, what do we do? We just substitute in place of variables all these terms and get some formulas. Right? So, if there are infinite number of terms here, we will get infinite number of formulas from x itself. Right? So, that means, substituting the free variables by the terms from d x ground terms we get the ground instances of the formula x, right? they are called the ground instances. The set of all ground instances if you take that is called the Herbrand expansion. So, it is the Herbrand expansion of x, let us compute that Herbrand expansion. So, here we may define it Herbrand expansion of x is let us write h e of x which is equal to the set of all x where 
x 1 substituted by t 1, x n substituted by t n such that t 1 to t n are in d x, x 1 to x n are all free variables all that are we write this way. This is the set of all free variables of x. This is the urban expansion. Okay. So, each one of this element in the urban expansion is called a ground instance of x. So, now look at the Hurwand expansion of that formula x in our example. Now, here to get the Hurwand expansion, what I do is first I substitute x as a, right, and similarly y as a, x and y can vary over the whole domain d now. So, first I get not. not p a f of a and p uh, a a. Okay. So, I keep that a x and vary this y, I must get everything right. So, vary this y that will give not p a f of a and uh, p f of a a. Next not p a f of a and p f of f of a a that continues varying this y right. So, next I will have varying x again not p f of a f of f of a and p a a not p f of a f of f of a and p f of a a right that again continues. So, same way it continues I find an infinite set that is its Herbrand expansion. All possibilities for x and y you substitute get the ground instances set of all those ground instances is the Herbrand expansion right. Now, what this suggests is that whatever model you have chosen phi of p s i equal to 1, phi of p s t equal to 0 this way right. The same thing thought as a propositional assignment right, there are now just propositions there are no quantifiers nothing is there atomic propositions you can think of them. Now, for this atomic things if I think of this as a P L interpretation propositional logic interpretation then the same thing should be a model of the Hermann expansion. because that is what basically we are doing right. Is it true or not? Just verify in this case. So, here it says P s i equal to 1 for each s in d x. So, that is P a a is 1, P a a is 1 and P f a a is 1, P f of f of a a is 1. So, all these aren't things everywhere they are 1, they are true now. Okay. Next thing it says P s t equal to 0 for t not equal to a. So, not P s t equal to 1 for t not equal to a, not P s t equal to 1 whatever s t may be t should not be a. So, if t is not a they are all 1 everywhere t is not a. Right? So, the whole set is satisfied now. So, the same phi satisfies H e. So, you see that phi is a model of H e. This is a propositional model now, right. It propositionally satisfies H e, fine. So, what Herbrand did it that a first order formula is satisfiable if and only if some infinite set of possibly an infinite set of propositions is satisfiable that is the contribution. Okay. So, you can reduce first order satisfiability 
to proportional satisfiability. Just we have to check proportional satisfiability here, but it might end up in an infinite formula. Okay, that is it and that is very clear of course, once you take any particular domain there it is clear. In that domain you substitute all those things satisfy for the relations whether they satisfy the relations or not. That is again propositional, but what it did is you do not have to search for any domain you just confine yourself to the urban domain that is enough. Is that clear? But you have to give a proof of this really that H e is propositionally satisfiable if and only if x is having a model, having a Hurban model. Then you have to show x is satisfiable if and only if x has a Hurban model. So, two things we have to see here, right? x is satisfiable if and only if it has a Hurban model, if and only if its Hurban expansion is proportionally satisfiable. Right. Let us see another example. I have just changed a bit there, huh? it should be easy to do. So, here our d x is equal to uh, say a same d x but we have a b right. So, you may have b and so on, but there is no a here. So, instead of a we have b, hmm. it is not another. And so, okay. earlier there was a, there is no a now, only b is there. So, from b it will start, it will look like this. Then what is its Hurbrand expansion? we just have to substitute x and y in place of this right or substitute x and y for this terms ground terms. So, we get p b f of b and not p b b p b f of b and not p b f of b right and then it continues p f of b, f of f of b and not p b b again it continues right. This is urban expansion ok. Now, you see that it is not satisfiable immediately huh? because second term, second ground instance, that ground instance is not satisfiable. So, this is not satisfiable, right, because of this, which is unsatisfiable. <coughs> now, you can show easily that this is also unsatisfiable, can you see or not? You take any domain, B is interpreted as something, call it B prime, okay. F is interpreted as some F prime, so call it F prime of B prime instead of F of x, F of B. Then you just instantiate this, it is for each x, for each y, everywhere it should be true, but for that B and F B it is not true, therefore it is unsatisfiable, right. So, the proof becomes also simple because of the Hurbrand expansion. We can really prove how it is unsatisfiable easily. Okay. So, the whole structure is seen now quickly once we have the Hurbrand expansion for this. Is it clear? So, this is what we are going to see next that a formula is satisfiable if and only if it has a Hurbrand model, if and only if its Hurbrand 
expansion is satisfiable.